Hello, my name is Michael Ray, and welcome to this video playlist series on Ego4D and a tutorial on how to use it. Within this playlist, you'll find a data set overview given by myself, as well as data access and tooling given by Devanche. Then, Jean and Miguel give training pipelines and features tutorials on how to set up and use the data set. Finally, Antonina will give you an introduction on how all the different Ego4D challenges and how to use them. So, in this video, we will cover what is Ego4D and show how it's more than just videos. Then we'll go into the available annotations for the dataset and how to access the dataset. And finally, we'll give a little bit of information about the data organization. So what is Ego4D? Ego4D is a collaboration of 15 different universities and Meta AI all around the world. It covers 3,670 hours of video, all recorded from a first person perspective. Through this, we had 931 different participants recording videos for us in 724 worldwide locations. This spans nine different countries and constitutes a living data set, so these values are being updated all the time. As an example, here are some videos from Ego4D, and you can really see the diversity of the collection, from indoors to outdoors, from people working to playing sports. In its entirety, though, Ego4D is more than just videos. For around a quarter of our videos, we have IMU data, which includes accelerometer and gyroscope values. For some, a small subset of videos, we have gaze data, so it allows you to see where the user was looking when, whilst they were recording. We also have pre-extracted features for those who wish to train with the dataset, but don't have the computing resources to train end-to-end -end on the whole thing. These are captured at 30 FPS intervals and include slow fast, omnivore image and omnivore video features with audio planned to come in the future. Finally, we also have third person videos. So we have an extra camera that was set up and recording an exocentric or third person perspective of the scene whilst the first person actors were recording. And finally, we have binaural audio on another small subset of videos. You can check our docs for more information on which videos have the different types of information. In terms of annotations, we have two types of annotations which are collected for the whole set of the, of the videos. And these include narrations and summaries. The summaries are a caption that summarizes every five minutes of video, giving a high level description of the video. In this example, you can see maybe a nine minute video, which is split into two different chunks and each one, each chunk will have a separate summary. We also have narrations and these captions individually describe the actions that are occurring. So in a sense, they are much more fine grained than the summaries. And you can see here that there are many summary, uh, many narrations split between the video. As another example, we can see this video here of someone in their kitchen. And we can see that the summary for this video was C was in a kitchen where C was the camera wearer, and then C washed a bowl and chopsticks with a sponge scourer. You can also see the individual narrations which describe the actions that are occurring. And you can tell that these are much more fine grained and it constitute the object and hand interactions that are occurring. For example, C rinses, rinses the sponge scourer or C pours water from the bowl. We also have a set of annotations for each of our challenges. And these are broken down into the five different benchmark tasks with each task having a separate set of annotations for each of the challenges. So for example, the benchmark of episodic memory is broken down into three different challenges. We have natural language queries, we have moment queries, and we have visual object queries. And an example of each of these can be seen on the right. And for each of these different challenges, we have a subset of the data, maybe between 50 or to 200 hours, so a much smaller subset of the data set, which have these annotations. And specifically for the natural language query example, which can be seen here, we might have a textual query, such as how many cups of sugar did I add, as well as the corresponding start and end times, which the query refers to within the video. You can check more details for each of the queries on the docs page or within our paper. Next up, we have two benchmark tasks, forecasting and hands and objects. Note that both these benchmarks use the same annotations. During these annotations, we have the critical frames and then pre and post conditions, which were labeled as when the action occurs. So you can see the critical frame is the point, what we call the point of no return, and this is when the action begins. We also have pre and post conditions, which are kind of the start and end times of this action. 
Next up, we have audio visual diarization rhization, and this is concerning the audio and how people talk. So you can see we have automated face and head detection. We can see face and head tracks cor correction, speaker labeling and audio visual anchor extraction, speech segmentation, transcription, as well as correcting speech transcriptions. And you can see an example of this on the right of the different types of annotations that we might have. And then finally, our last benchmark task is social. And this includes camera wear attention, whether someone's looking at you, and speech target classification, whether someone's talking to you. From the very beginning of collecting this data set, ethics and privacy was very important to us from the very start. Every site had their own review board, and although there were common guidelines between each of the universities, ultimately each university has a slightly different process for going through the ethics board. And because of this, we need you to sign licenses to access the data set, one per university. And as an example of this, I'm going to give a quick demo on how to gain access to the data set and sign all the licenses for the different universities. So you can go to our website here, which is https ego4d-data.org. Now we have the ego4d website loaded, we can scroll down and click download. This will take us to a form which we can click to sign ego4d licenses. So this is the form that you use to generate a data usage agreement. And you can quickly just have a look at what the licenses look like in this draft PDF here. So now we have the license PDF. As you can see, whilst it appears to be long, there is a lot in common in between each of the different universities. So for example, the University of Bristol, which is the first license that you can see here, had to follow the EU GDPR rules. And so as such has to have some of that uh, legal documentation within this license. However, for other universities, this will not be the case. Uh, and once you have a quick read through, you will see that in most cases, 95% uh, to 99% of the, the legal documents are exactly the same. And once you're happy with this, you can then apply to gain access to the data set. You can see we have two options in order to sign to gain access to the data set, either signing as an individual or signing as an organization. Now, for most cases, we envisage people be signing as individuals, as you can only sign as an organization if you are able to sign on behalf of your entire organization. And in most cases, we assume this isn't the case. So please fill in your details and then you can click submit. Within 24 hours to 48 hours, you should get an email back giving you the ability to sign the different licenses. Once this is sent, you will then get an access key, which allows you to access the data set. So here are some tips on how to sign in successfully. Remember, only official signatories can sign as an organization, and in most cases, you'll be signing as an individual. Ensure you use your institutional email address, and this ensures that you're using the data set for research and will help with your application. Make sure that all the institutional licenses have been signed. Unfortunately, we cannot give you access to specific parts of the data set that are recorded by only certain universities. It's an all or nothing thing. And as a final thing, your access key only lasts for 14 days. And whilst you can apply for more access keys without having to sign, uh, you will have to do so. So we hope that in your first implementation or first accessing of the data, you'll be able to get your key and then download some of the data and maybe play around with a visualizer. And then later on, maybe once you're writing up a paper and you need some videos for um, results or other kind of things, then you can reapply for your access key and get another access key so you can view the data again and download more data if you need to. And an easy way of checking if your access key works is going to our data visualizer. And here you can put in your access key and then view through the data set and query based on certain uh, benchmark tasks or even content of the videos. Devanch will go more into the data visualizer in an upcoming video. Finally, I want to talk about data set organization. So behind the scenes, each university has its own S3 bucket containing the videos that they recorded. And in total, there are 13 different buckets. The annotations which are collected by Meta are in a separate bucket. However, you don't need to know this behind the scenes as we have a CLI or command line interface in order to access the data and download specific videos. So for example, you might wanna get all the videos from say Bristol and Catania. And so you can download only those specific videos. You may also want to download all the videos for a specific task, such as episodic memory or audiovisual deprivation. And similarly, you can do the same for that. Or you can even download the entire data set as well as all the annotations at once. But see this command line interface for more information. 
Here, I'm providing some useful links on the data set. So you can see the main website at ego4d-data.org, and then you can prepend to gain access to the different types of uh, resources that we have. So we have the docs using the docs prepend uh, tag here. You can get access to the command line interface documentation by adding CLI, the forum at discuss, and then gain access to the data visualizer with visualize.ego4d-data.org. And finally, we have a small update titled version 1.1, which is coming soon as of the recording of this video, which includes some small fixes for the data set. Thank you for watching this video, and we hope you find it useful for beginning your research into Ego4D.